Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this section of the video, we're going to do some more microgreens. It's been a while since I've done any microgreens, um, just because I've been growing a lot of stuff under my little table here, so I have limited space. You know, I've been doing the, the pepper plants, the tomato plants uh, earlier on, and now I have the strawberries, still a couple under here that need to go out in the garden once those cabbages get done. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do six different microgreens. We're going to get them growing, do just a quick little step-by-step -step how to do it. And all a microgreen is, it's a young plant that we're going to harvest at about a week to two weeks old. And we're going to eat them just like that. What that does is it gives you the most nutrient-dense food versus the mature plant. So what we're doing, we got some kale, cabbage, red clover, lettuce, Swiss chard, and flaxseed. Now if you were to let them get to mature, like the cabbages out there, we're going to eat those, they're going to be awesome, they're going to taste great, but the nutrition as they get older, it starts to diminish. When you're eating microgreens, you're eating them right from the powerhouse, man. They don't need any fertilizer to grow because they're using what's in their seed, what nature gave them to start growing. So we're going to harvest these right before they actually need any additives to keep them growing like we do with the mature plants, compost, tea, and all that. Um, and so we'll get, we'll get these rolling. I'll show you what I use and how to do it real quick. It's very easy. You can do this anywhere. You can do it in any kind of containers. And I mean, you have an apartment, anything. You get a south-facing window, you can grow microgreens. So um, let's get you in closer. I'll just kind of show you my setup real quick and we'll get going. Okay, so here's my setup. Um, I went online to Amazon and actually ordered these trays. I have quite a few of them. These are called halves, I guess. This is a half, and if you did a full one, that would obviously be a full. But with these trays, they have little slits in there, as you can see, so the water can get through. I put two of these trays into a solid full sheet. They fit right in, so we'll plant each different one in the in the double trays. And what I do is I usually water from the bottom, so I'll fill this up with water. I'll set this down, and then the water can absorb from up versus trying to pour stuff over the seeds. You could also, if you're not using this kind of setup, if you're using just like a, a pan or anything, you can spray it with a mister to wet it versus pouring like with a a water or something like that. So what I'm going to do basically is grab my starting mix. This is what I use just you know the Lowe's or whatever natural organic seed starting mix. Okay so I got the seed starting mix. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these up. I fill them up right almost to this top lip maybe a little bit below it and I just I like that soil a little higher so when those microgreens start to grow you can cut them pretty close to the base from right about this level so all we're gonna do dump in the soil mix and just make sure you get all the clumps out of it you know sometimes it's clumpy in there but we'll just get some in there More. Hopefully I have enough to do all these trades. I just bought one bag of this stuff, so I think that's about all we're going to be doing. And then I just take the other one and just kind of push it down in there. And that makes a nice flat surface to grow in. And so I'm going to fill up all six of them, just like that. Just add in the soil, declumping it. Spread it out. Boy, that was almost perfect right there. A little more. Spread it out like that. Grab my other tray. Flatten it out. And I'm going to move on to the next one, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I have all the trays filled up with soil. Now we're going to 
get them watered in a little. So what I do basically is I take some lemon juice. Let me grab that real quick. Little thing of lemon juice. And I just give my gallon of water a squirt of that. They kind of like it slightly acidic, so just put a little bit in there, no big deal. We'll stir that in. Now obviously, my waters around here have all been sitting out over 24 hours, so, I mean, I do not use chlorinated water. You just let it sit for a couple, it'll take that chlorination out and you'll be good to go. So now what I'm going to do let's get you back down here I'm going to take this tray out and I'm going to fill up this bottom one with water and I'm just going to allow that to soak in just to where it's totally full. We're going to just kind of let that sit there and that'll just absorb that water. So I'll do that to the other ones and get all that water ready to go. Then we'll be ready to seed it. Alright, so let's get started seeding. So we got them all floating kinda. They're floating in there and that water will just start drawing up from the bottom. We'll just let it do it on its own naturally, no biggie it'll eventually soak up, absorb into there. So first thing I'm going to do, Swiss chard, sorry you can't really see it that well, Swiss chard ruby red. We're going to throw that in there and I printed out a nice little handy uh, microgreen comparison chart from online. So basically all of these that I'm going to be doing aside from the kale and the cabbage are considered kind of a fast grower which means 10 to 15 days you're harvesting and that's what all of these are so let's get Swiss chard seeds very interesting looking they're a bigger seed so we'll just get them you kinda want them dense but you don't want them laying on top of each other too much but you do want enough in there to where you have a good solid blanket of seeds. I'm about out of these so I'm just going to kind of use them up. That's probably too much but like I said I was down to the last of the packet so I want to get it used up. The flax brown seed, now this one a lot smaller. See that? Real fine. And with those, we're just going to get them spread out. And that's probably plenty for them. All right. So there's the first two. And they start looking really cool, man. Just a nice, even distribution. Now let's move over to these two. We'll do a, we'll take a look at the seeds and see what they look like, and then we'll uh, get get everything seeded in and planted. Did see a couple of bare spots real quick. Bear with me on the flax seed. There we go. All right. So next, next we are doing lettuce. It is sea fresh lettuce. Um, there we go. And that's again a very fine, very fine seed. 
You can barely see it in relationship to this brown dirt, but you just do your best. I have my growing light off right now because if I have it on, it would just look way too bright. Let's take a look with my growing light on. I don't like the contrast. I like it better off. Get better color. Alright, so, again, lettuce planted. Done. Move right along. We are doing some red clover now. Red clover kind of looks like a millet seed or something. A little circular. And you can see that way easier. Make sure you get around those edges too, man. And you do want a nice blanket because you want them to be able to grow just nice and tight and straight up you know you don't want them you don't want them where they don't have any neighbors next to them and they're hanging over and stuff you know all right boom I think we have enough in there like I said it's hit and miss man you just kind of some people make it an art and actually know exactly how many ounces to put in and all that good jazz and they're all professional little scales and all that stuff not me I just hook it up let's just eat right let's eat good there we go we got them ready moving to the last set these are our slower growers they say about um, well what does that paper say it said 16 to 25 days. Now, I've never let any microgreens go to 25 days. Just haven't. They're done before then. So, this is cabbage. Golden Acre Cabbage. Alright. Those are cool looking seeds. Bird seed. Alright, we'll get them rolling here. I like to go, like I said, go around the edges. And this one's a hard one to see too, so. But you'll get it coated just fine. You just sew like you normally do, like this. Bam. That's done. Last one we're doing is a little bit of kale. And kale. Just looks like little black seeds. Again, not the easiest to see, but I think we'll do all right. So this morning, I just got back from the DMV. I took my 16-year-old, Anthony, to go get his license, which he passed flawlessly, which is nice. So now, right away, he wanted to go up the road, which is literally about a half mile up the road to the YMCA to go work out with his buddies. So he's all excited he got to do that. The wife is in Sarasota getting a massage that I had gotten her for Christmas. She's using that gift card. And the little one's in daycare. So I'm just having a little moment to myself. We're going over this. We're going to do some microgreens. Now, one thing we're going to do after that is I'm going to take more of the seed starter mix. And not a lot though, but just a little bit, and just kind of, just kind of crumble it over the top a little, just to give it a little bit of coverage. But I do not cover deep, just a little. And sometimes you almost don't even need to, because if you plant it really uh, thick, it'll like take this top layer of soil and it'll literally just like raise it up as it grows, because it's such a thick layer of plants. And you'll have like a roof of soil on top of them as they grow. So I don't really like putting too much down. Just a little bit for coverage. But that's about it. We're going to hook these up real quick. And I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have the seeds in there. We got that little bit of dirt on the top. Just going to kind of tap them down make a little contact with that soil with those seeds 
And that's it, man. Now what I do is I spray the top with my spray bottle. Get it some moisture, and then that moisture will be coming in from the bottom, and then a little bit up top to get it going. Then we put the blackout domes on them, and we're done. So let me get the spray bottle. Okay, so now all I do, I set these tops on there. They think they're underground, growing like normal. And that's it. And then we'll check them every couple of days, make sure they're, I mean, we'll check them every day. And we've got to mist them down probably once a day. And that's it. Then we'll just keep letting them grow. And like I said, about a week or seven, ten days or something, these four will be done and that one might take about another couple days the kale and the cabbage so that's how you start your microgreens make sure if you go back to my microgreen oops video um, I think that was I don't know a year ago or something I may I did microgreens but I moistened them way too much it was so moist in there that it just molded and it's a pretty nasty looking video so you don't want them too wet okay but you do want them moist but not wet so we'll monitor it and we'll make sure we're doing it all correctly and uh, that's it man so there you go six sets of microgreens in what ten minutes we're done here's my dog Sam Bones I've had him for 12 almost 13 years um, last Sunday Last Sunday he came in, in the evening, you know, he was just out in the backyard like normal. He came in Sunday night before we were going to bed and he was looking really uncomfortable, like something wasn't right with him. His stomach was feeling really tight, um, just looking uncomfortable. So we kind of hung out with him for a little bit. He got, he got to laying down, so me and my wife said we'll take him to the vet in the morning if, um, if he still liked that. Maybe it was just gas or something. Well, I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning like normal to get ready for work, and when I came out here, um, my, my Sam Bones was passed away on my kitchen floor. Um, and I couldn't talk about it yet because uh, it's sad. I, <laughs> I love my animals. I love my dogs. They're, they're my kids. I mean, I've had them for almost 13 years now. He's part of me. So... He's passed. We lost Sam Monday, last Monday. Um, and so now we're just kind of getting a little more adapted to not having him. You know, we keeping our other two dogs as, you know, happy and comfy. And um, it's just hard when you lose a pet like that, you know. And then you think to yourself, damn, I ain't getting any more dogs because I hate going through that. You know, you know you got a good 14, maybe 15 year run, maybe 12 or 13 with, with Sam. Um, and you know you're going to outlive him if everything goes right. And it's just hard to do that, but I also love my animals. I love my animals. So I don't need to get a new dog or another dog to fill any void or anything like that. Um, I still have my little girl Daisy and our little Chihuahua Momo. And that's all we're going to keep for now and just um, just move on keep going you know it's very sad um, it was sad I couldn't get a hold of my co-worker that I work with he on Mondays I work 11 hours open to close by myself at the at the parts department I, I manage so I couldn't get a hold of him I was trying to get him to go in for me so I could you know take Sam into the vet to get cremated disposed however you want to call it um, and I couldn't get a hold of him, so I literally had to wrap Sam up, put him in the back of my wife's SUV, leave the door open. It was 6.30 in the morning at that point, and um, the vet wasn't going to be there till 8. So my wife was hysterical, you know, crying. That was her baby, too. We got him as a, 
uh, stray. One of our friends found him years ago and they were gonna put him in the pound. They found him after a big tropical storm we had. No collar, no nothing. And we took him. We took him in and we loved him for 12 years. Really good. I mean, he had a good life. Um, but anyway, so he had to basically lay in the back of her, her SUV with the tailgate up for an hour or so before my wife could take him to the vet. And um, it was a hard day for her. She, I hated having to leave to go to work and make her do that. Um, but I had to, you know, I had to get my store open. Unfortunately, um, you gotta do what you gotta do, right, to keep the family rolling. But it was definitely hard. My wife stayed home that day and just grieved. I tried to fight back tears all day at work. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all last week was pretty hard. Um, it was kind of nice having um, Friday night taking my wife to the lightning game for her birthday. It was a surprise I bought a couple of months ago. So it was nice to go and just kind of have some fun and laugh a little. Um, but anyway, just wanted to let you know Sam Bones passed away and we, we really love him. So rest in peace little buddy.